Isolationism is a category of foreign policies institutionalized by leaders who assert that their nation's best interests are best served by keeping the affairs of other countries at a distance. One possible motivation for limiting international involvement is to avoid being drawn into dangerous and otherwise undesirable conflicts. There may also be a perceived benefit from avoiding international trade agreements or other mutual assistance pacts. Introduction Isolationism has been defined as a policy or doctrine of trying to isolate one's country from the affairs of other nations by declining to enter into alliances, foreign economic commitments, international agreements, and generally attempting to make one's economy entirely self-reliant, seeking to devote the entire efforts of one's country to its own advancement, both diplomatically and economically, while remaining in a state of peace by avoiding foreign entanglements and responsibilities. Isolationism by country Topic Albania Topic Bhutan Before 1999, Bhutan had banned television and the internet in order to preserve its culture, environment, identity, etc. Eventually, Jigma Singh Wangchuk lifted the ban on television and the internet. His son, Jigma Kassar Namyel Wangchuk, was elected as Druk Galpo of Bhutan, which helped forge the Bhutanese democracy. Subsequently, Bhutan has transitioned from an absolute monarchy to a multi-party democracy. The development of Bhutanese democracy has been marked by the active encouragement and participation of reigning Bhutanese monarchs since the 1950s, beginning with legal reforms such as the abolition of slavery, and culminating in the enactment of Bhutan's constitution. <laughs> China After Zheng He's voyages in the 15th century, the foreign policy of the Ming dynasty in China became increasingly isolationist. The Hung Wu Emperor was the first to propose the policy to ban all maritime shipping in 1371. The Qing dynasty that came after the Ming dynasty often continued the Ming dynasty's isolationist policies. Wakao, which literally translates to Japanese pirates or dwarf pirates were pirates who raided the coastlines of China, Japan, and Korea, and were one of the key primary concerns, although the maritime ban was not without some control. <laughs> Japan From 1641 to 1853, the Tokugawa Shogunate of Japan enforced a policy which it called Kaiken. The policy prohibited foreign contact with most outside countries. However, the commonly held idea that Japan was entirely closed is misleading. In fact, Japan maintained limited scale trade and diplomatic relations with China, Korea, and Ryukyu Islands. The culture of Japan developed with limited influence from the outside world and had one of the longest stretches of peace in history. During this period, Japan developed thriving cities, castle towns, increasing commodification of agriculture and domestic trade, wage labor, increasing literacy and concomitant print culture, laying the groundwork for modernization even as the Shogunate itself grew weak. <laughs> Korea In 1863, King Gojong took the throne of the Joseon dynasty when he was a child. His father, Regent Hyungzon Daewangan, ruled for him until Gojong reached adulthood. During the mid-1860s he was the main proponent of isolationism and the principal instrument of the persecution of both native and foreign Catholics. Following the division of the peninsula after independence from Japan in 1945-48, Kim Il-sung inaugurated an isolationist totalitarian regime in the north, which has been continued by his son and grandson to the present day. North Korea is often referred to as the Hermit Kingdom. <inaudible> Paraguay 
Just after independence was achieved, Paraguay was governed from 1814 by the dictator José Gaspar Rodríguez de Francia, who closed the country's borders and prohibited trade or any relation with the outside world until his death in 1840. The Spanish settlers who had arrived just before independence had to intermarry with either the old colonists or with the native Guarani, in order to create a single Paraguayan people. Francia had a particular dislike of foreigners and any who came to Paraguay during his rule which would have been very difficult were not allowed to leave for the rest of their lives. An independent character, he hated European influences and the Catholic Church, turning church courtyards into artillery parks and confession boxes into border sentry posts, in an attempt to keep foreigners at bay. <laughs> United States While some scholars, such as Robert J. Art, believe that the United States has an isolationist history, other scholars dispute this by describing the United States as following a strategy of unilateralism or non-interventionism instead. Robert Art makes his argument in A Grand Strategy for America 2003. Books that have made the argument that the United States followed unilateralism instead of isolationism include Walter A. McDougall's Promised Land, Crusader State 1997, John Lewis Gaddis's Surprise, Security, and the American Experience 2004, and Bradley F. Podlaska's Acting Alone 2010. Both sides claim policy prescriptions from George Washington's Farewell Address as evidence for their argument. Bear F. Braumoller argues that even the best case for isolationism, the United States in the interwar period, has been widely misunderstood and that Americans proved willing to fight as soon as they believed a genuine threat existed. Events during and after the revolution related to the Treaty of Alliance with France, as well as difficulties arising over the neutrality policy pursued during the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars, encouraged another perspective. A desire for separateness and unilateral freedom of action merged with national pride and a sense of continental safety to foster the policy of isolation. Although the United States maintained diplomatic relations and economic contacts abroad, it sought to restrict these as narrowly as possible in order to retain its independence. The Department of State continually rejected proposals for joint cooperation, a policy made explicit in the Monroe Doctrine's emphasis on unilateral action. Not until 1863 did an American delegate attend an international conference. See also <laughs> <laughs> Works cited